Hey, this is Ryan from 60 Cycle Hump, the guitar podcast, and today I'm going to talk about a very sensitive and controversial topic. If you get upset when you hear conversations about dip switches, now's the time to turn off YouTube, get up and walk away from the computer, and don't come back for a long time because that's all we're talking about here on the internet from now on is dip switches. It's very important. It's very bad what's going on with these switches dipping like this. The switch is just dipping and switching. It's awful what they're doing to us. They're doing this to us and it's terrible. How dare they? Uh, so anyways, last week I put up a video talking about how much I hate the new pickguard design on the Les Paul Double Cut Juniors. Uh, some of you agree with me, some of you disagree with me and that's fine. I still don't like it. You didn't change my mind in the comments. So anyways, uh, a lot of you in the comment section brought up the dip switches in, in a way where you were like, hey, how come you didn't cover the dip switch problem with uh, the Gibson 2019 line? So I looked it up, I did my homework, I watched the videos, I read people's opinions on them, and I observed the outrage. Oh, it's just so awful, everyone's so upset, and I don't really get it. I don't really understand what the problem actually is. To me, it seems like the actual problem is that people don't like that this guitar that comes with the dip switches is being called the standard. Uh, I, I guess I can see the problem there. You want the standard Les Paul to be a very traditional Les Paul without any new bells or whistles, without a, uh, a circuit board in the control cavity. I get it, I, I kinda understand that, but I don't understand the actual outrage over the existence of the dip switches. They seem cool to me. They seem fine to me. Uh, let's, let's go over what they do. Uh, I've got a picture of the control plate right here. I'll talk about the push-pull knobs first. There's a bunch of options there that sound great to me. It sounds like the sort of thing I do to my guitars. Uh, you get a push-pull to coil split both pickups if you want. Uh, I mean a push-pull for each pickup and the coil split. Then you have a push-pull on the neck tone that gives you out of phase, which is something people do to guitars all the time. It gets you lots of really classic sounds. People have been doing out of phase settings on guitars for a very long time. Uh, a new thing, the uh, the bridge tone, you push pull that and you can select which coil is activated when you coil split. So you can either have the coil that's closest to the bridge or the neck, or you can have the coils in between. I think that sounds like a great option and I'd love to mess around with that. Now let's get into the, the awful, the controversial dip switch bank here. There are five dip switches. The uh, the first one turns on, well, this, the first and second one turn on or off the coil splitting options. So you can just turn those options off with the dip switches. You don't have to have them there. You'll never have to worry about them or get confused. Uh, the third dip switch turns the neck volume into a high pass filter. That sounds cool. That sounds like a fun thing to mess around with. The, uh, the number four position changes the bridge volume into another high pass filter. So you can have high pass filters on either pickup. Sounds like a fun thing to mess around with. And then there's this transient suppression, and then there's this transient suppression thing on the fifth uh, dip switch, which sounds like it's like a studio trick sort of thing. Like if you're doing direct into DAW recording, it helps you out. Uh, you don't need to use it at all. If you just play normal into a pedal board or an amp or whatever you do, it's just for like, it's a studio option for people who need it. Relax. I think that's really my message of this video. Relax. So these dip switches, you don't have to use them if you don't want to. They're hidden in there. It's never going to interrupt your normal playing. What is the big deal here? I mean, I know that there is a circuit board uh, control panel here but it's in a control panel route that looks pretty dang standard. Normal size pots in here, as far as I can tell. You can scrap this whole thing, pull the whole thing out and start over with a new wiring harness. This is a $3,400 guitar we're talking about here. And I know like if you're paying that much money, it's, you know, it's not unreasonable to expect 
a guitar for $3,400 to come exactly the way you want it if you're ordering it custom. This is a produced factory product here. It's gonna come the way it comes. But if you're spending that kind of money, you can afford a new wiring harness and you can afford someone else to install it for you. And if you can't afford it, then you shouldn't have spent $3,400 on a guitar. You need to check your priorities and buy a much more affordable guitar because uh, I don't think anyone should be putting themselves through financial hardship to be buying a guitar like this. Uh, maybe you've saved up your money your whole life just hoping to buy a, a Gibson Les Paul standard, like that model name for some reason. And this is your splurge purchase that you've saved for uh, as like your retirement gift to yourself or something like that. And you're like, why are you doing that? Get a guitar that fits the specs that you want if this bothers you so much. And the other thing is like, yeah, I get it's called the standard. This guitar only comes in two colors. It comes in like crunch, crunch berry blue or it comes in like double denim Canadian tuxedo blue, like this faded blue jean blue. It's obvious that these guitars, this model guitar is not meant to replace all Les Pauls ever. It's a, it's a limited line of two colors and they have a bunch of other versions of Les Pauls coming out for 2019. The outrage here is ridiculous and over the top and everyone just needs to relax and dial it down a little bit. I mean, you've got a bunch of other models here. You've got the Tribute, which is $1,200. It's like a third the cost. And it looks like a really classy, classic Les Paul. You've got the Traditional, $2,800. Also classic and something that would scratch the itch for someone who wants a traditional style Les Paul, that's just the classic Les Paul, no bells and whistles. And then of course the classic 60s. I think if I was gonna spend money that I've never spent on a guitar before, and it was had to be a Les Paul from Gibson, I think this is the one I would be buying from Gibson 2019. This looks like my style, and it comes in gold. You know I like gold. Uh, and that was $2,300. I don't understand why everyone's getting so upset about this one model that comes in two colors, and has some more advanced features in it. It's not a personal attack against you guys. Like Gibson didn't do this to hurt you. Like I feel like people are complaining about this just because Gibson pulled their line back so far this year. They have way less guitars this year and the vast majority of them are playing it really, really safe. And then they'd really just have two guitars in the lineup that have these newer kinds of features. They have the, the standard and they have the high performance. I think everyone just needs to relax. Like I keep saying, but that's the one I would get. I'm never gonna spend that kind of money on a guitar. And if I did spend that kind of money on a guitar, I'd probably be getting something from a completely different brand. I'd be getting something from a smaller builder that would make things exactly to my specs. So that's something to think about. Um, other people have been asking us to discuss the, uh, the prices of Gibson. And so Steve and I, my co-host for the podcast, uh, are gonna get together sometime this week, hopefully, and discuss uh, whether or not Gibson is too expensive. So subscribe, keep an eye out for that. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Fight me about these tip switches. I don't care. Uh, support us on Patreon if you like the content we make. All right, later guys.